Just so. Vietnam. 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 Just so Vietnam. Hello and welcome to Just So Vietnam, a guide to life in Vietnam. In 10 minutes, we will explore modern life Vietnam through the eyes of expats who call it home. Expect a lot of valuable information, experiences and events brought to you by expat communities here. My name is Martijn, I'm your main host and as always with me is my co-host Sam. Hi Sam. Hi Martin. How about it? I'm already looking forward to it, Sam. But for now, let's start the program with some useful information. World-class teams from eight different countries will come together in the central city of Da Nang for the Da Nang International Fireworks Festival 2019, which is to be held between the 1st of June and the 6th of July. This is the 10th time Da Nang organizes this event and it is expected to attract a lot of people to this beautiful city. Now if you want to pay a visit, perhaps it's a good idea to book a room in advance. Many travelers are expected to go, so hotels might be fully booked. Paragliding is one of the favorite sports of travelers and explorers who like to observe the complete scenery from the air. And for them, I have some good news. The first ever hang gliding festival will be organized on Lee Sun Island in Quang Yai province from the 21st until the 25th of June. Apart from popular destinations such as Haizang and Lai Chou in the north and the Nang in the central region, paragliders now have another spot to choose from when picking their destination to enjoy the beautiful views of Vietnam. Vietnam's capital Hanoi ranks 15th among the top 25 best destinations in the world in the annual Traveler's Choice Awards from TripAdvisor. Hanoi's high rankings is the result of last year's efforts from the city and travel agencies to make it a good travel destination. Hanoi, which holds the title City of Peace, promises to bring more unique and interesting experiences for visitors in 2019. In 2018, CNN did a program called Street Life Hanoi, in which they also featured the food of Hanoi. And this is definitely a reason for you to check out Hanoi if you haven't already done so. Now let's move to Ho Chi Minh City. Ho Chi Minh City is one of the three cheapest destinations in the world, according to the Backpacker Index. Let me share some numbers with you. You can stay in a hotel here if you're on a budget for $4 a night. Eating here, expect something like a little over $4 a day for two healthy, delicious meals. And public transport is a little bit over $1 a day. There's also some cheap activities you can do in Ho Chi Minh City. You can, for example, visit Bain Tang Market uh, for buying some souvenirs or having some delicious cheap food. Also, you can visit one of the many museums in the city, which also aren't very expensive. Now, of course, most of you already know that it's not just in Ho Chi Minh City that you can get two meals for a little over $4 a day. It's pretty much throughout all of Vietnam. For those of you who don't know yet, let's meet Sam in Just Ask and see where we can find cheap, delicious meals in Vietnam. Take it away, Sam. Thank you, Martijn. Wouldn't it be great if you could find a restaurant where you could easily order from a large range of options? Well, you're in luck. All throughout Vietnam, you can find an abundance of small restaurants serving something that's known as Kum Bing Zan. Kum Bing Zan literally translates as rice for the people, but I like to call it Vietnamese buffet rice. Of course, the main thing you can get is rice, but it comes with a massive choice of different dishes. You can choose some things like different kinds of meat, tofu, even insects. The price should be just 30 to 40,000 Vietnam dong. That's around 1.2 to 1.7 dollars. But of course, if you're hungry, you can pay a little bit more and order extra. Chị ơi, cho em thêm thịt nhé.
the food is traditionally associated with blue collar workers. But in fact, it's for anyone. It's a good chance to meet office workers and locals right through to expats, meaning Kunming Zan is a great place to rub shoulders with the local community. Looks delicious. Not fine dining, but the appeal of an easy eating experience is always going to be well suited to a foreign community. What have been your experiences of Kunming Zan? What do you like about it? Or if you don't like it, then why? Get in touch via Facebook or YouTube and leave us a comment. I'll be back next episode with more. Thank you, Sam. That was very interesting. Now, everybody travels for a different reason. Some people prefer to check out culture, other people like to go to nature, and of course, there's people who just want to relax and have an escape from their busy life. Let's meet Gary Flynn and just try and find out what his reason is to travel. So, Gary, tell me, what is your reason to travel? One of the big reasons that you have so many people traveling out of their home country to see culture lives. And I think the way that people eat and drink and cook, that's a very good insight into their values and their lives. We were somewhere deep in the heart of Nari district, Batkan province, following Huang Hu Van, a 60-year-old Nung local. He is going to teach Jerry the traditional way of catching stone crabs. Armed with little more than a strange array of lighting devices, a bucket, and the bare hands, then led the way into the water. Đi soi cua là ta phải đi ngược dòng, nước khỏi bị đục. Thế ta đi ở dưới lên, còn nếu đi ở trên xuống là đục là ta không nhìn thấy cua. Ôi, lên nhanh lên, đây rồi, thấy một con rồi. Ôi, đây, đừng nhá. Ôi. Đây, nó lấp dưới hòn đá đây. Đây rồi. Ta được một con. Hay là nó kẹt đấy. Oh my God, that looks so interesting, Gary. Have you ever done anything like this before in your life? It's not something I ever expected to do while working for Hot Table. I usually spend a lot of time sat in an air-conditioned office uh, with a laptop or on the phone. But get out of your comfort zone to see these sort of things and to learn about new people and different ways of living is more in harmony with, with nature, which you know, is, is not really something that we do, certainly not back home, um, even in Hanoi. The stone crabs vary in size and color, looking like little more than oddly sentient gray pebbles. Lots of these crabs are easy to overlook, but those larger, red-tinged stone crabs, which are the tastiest in this stream, are now harder to find. After about one hour, the bucket teemed with life. Van nimbly clambered up the river bank, yanking dead branches off trees to get the blaze going. Ngày xưa tôi còn trẻ là tôi cũng đi sông suối như thế này ở cả tháng rồi. Khi nào hết gạo mới về. Mà khi đi chỉ là muối thôi. Thức ăn là ta kiếm ở trong rừng, đêm ở trong rừng. Đi đến đâu là ta đốt lửa đến đấy. Mỗi lần là ở một khu, mỗi lần là một chỗ. Nhưng mà khu này hết hết cua rồi thì ta lại đi chỗ khác. Người ta kiếm cua ở đây ra lại chuyển chỗ khác. Ây da, bò đi. It's 
totally worth it. Absolutely. I mean, uh, the crabs that we caught, fresh crab, and Juban, his, his cooking skills are good. Um, getting a pot set up with a fire underneath it, just lodged between two rocks on a riverbank. Some locally sourced noodles, a few herbs, some chilies. Job done. Boil the uh, crabs up. I've never even eaten a crab that I've caught myself before, so it is um, definitely an eye-opening experience into what goes into getting a crab from the water to a plate. Wow, Gary, that's a very special experience you're showing with us today. It really looks like you got welcomed with open arms by your guide in the jungle. And for you, of course, there's also tons of different experiences in Vietnam that can blow your mind. So be like Gary, pack your bags and go check it out. And with that, we come to the end of this episode. So please, as always, subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Facebook, and leave your comments and photos on VTV World page. See you in the next episode. Have a good evening. Just so Vietnam.